A recent poll found that notwithstanding the urgings of the president and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and John Kerry, only 3% of Americans regard climate change as their major concern. 3%. So that's the real 97% consensus. And since the evangelists for climate change alarmism like to wrap themselves in the mantle of science, I think it's appropriate that we begin to unsettle the putatively settled consensus about climate change with a few elementary scientific lessons. In general, there are three main biospheric benefits of atmospheric CO2 enrichment. First, they increase plant productivity. Second, it enhances plant water use efficiency. And third, it helps plants to withstand and better endure various environmental and resource constraints and limitations. The most important gas in the atmosphere for life has steadily gone down. And if we had not caused this little blip in modern times, it would have continued to go down until it was too low for the existence of plants and life would have begun to die on this planet. The ongoing rise in atmospheric CO2 should be welcomed with open arms. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant, it is the very elixir of life. We actually should celebrate the emergence from the Little Ice Age and the idea that we demonize it um, is a kind of madness and it's a madness that has been embraced by the people who benefited from it most. The models on the whole predict a fairly sharp warming pattern that should be sustained over many decades. And whether we look in the surface record or especially in the satellite record and the weather balloon record, the warming just hasn't been there compared to what models say should have happened. It is clear to anyone who analyzes this graph of 600 million years of CO2 and temperature that they are not strongly correlated, if at all. There is essentially a breach of trust on the part of science, uh, where the public, having seen the way the models failed, uh, decide they no longer trust these guys to tell them what the temperature is going to be like in 2050. So they then start adjusting the past with the result that the public no longer trusts these bodies to tell them what the temperature was in 1950. That is the insanity of what climate science has done to itself. There are so many studies that talk about and demonstrate these benefits that I've talked to you about today, literally thousands of them. And we sent this material to the EPA when they went through their endangerment finding process. All of it was ignored. A group of uh, climate scientists uh, actually wrote to the Attorney General to demand that he, he bring these prosecutions against dissidents as they saw it. These are scientists who signed this letter. It's quite outrageous. And in fact, it subsequently emerged a couple of weeks later that the head guy had a sideline going in a so-called non-profit foundation that had received gazillions of dollars in funding from various US agencies it matters because the government is presuming to tax us and regulate us and uh, make changes to the economy. You know, I don't think any field survives this degree of corruption uh, without losing, if nothing else, its self-respect. Approximately $3.2 trillion have been added to the economy over the period 1961 to 2011 because of the increase in CO2. Projecting that forward in time, we estimate it'll be an additional $10 trillion between now and 2050. If you actually wanted to change people's behavior in some meaningful way, you'd have to use carbon numbers of hundreds of dollars a ton, and they would change people's behavior by shutting down the economy. Our life is better than it has ever been these last 150 years. And we should celebrate, as we've been doing today, CO2, the warming of the world, just as the medieval warm period was a great advance for the world in political, social, cultural, economic terms, so has this period.